Welcome to The Authentic Spiritual Journey, a weekly podcast featuring real and practical spiritual conversations from fresh perspectives here on the Experience of the Soul podcast channel. Today, episode 298, Own Your Power. And now your host, Reverend Cynthia Alice Anderson. Hello and welcome to The Authentic Spiritual Journey. My name is Cynthia Alice Anderson. I'm the host. I'm here today in my home studio, Anderson Studios in Orlando, Florida. And today is Monday, March 4th, 2024. And I love today because it is March 4th. And that kind of goes with our title today. It is a fun topic today. It's also a very in-depth and serious topic. And today's show title is Own Your Power. Own Your Power. So this is the Authentic Spiritual Journey Show 298, Own Your Power. I'm pausing briefly because this title for me is packed. It's packed with information, my 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 little mind over here is almost on overload with how many areas of life this touches. And before I get more into the show, I want to give a shout out to our friends in Japan. And uh, I love to lift up other countries. And I have some good friends from Japan. And when I was younger, I learned a little bit of the language. I worked with somebody who was Japanese and his mom taught Japanese, and they made a little tape for me. This is back in the days of cassette tapes. And for some reason, this family has come to my mind in thinking about this show and talking about this topic of own your power. And what I know for us, friends, is that owning one's power is a journey. Owning your power is a journey. And I had to type that out for myself just now so I don't forget that it's not bad or good where I am. I am on a journey. Growing up in the South, there were certain rules and regs you applied by, or you abided by, excuse me. There were certain rules and regs, in other words, there was etiquette that you abided by as a Southern woman. Well, I often was not in alignment with those rules and etiquette. Although I did like most young girls, I wore dresses to church with patent leather shoes and white gloves when I was very young. And that was what you did. You were a lady and you were learning your place in the world as a lady. Even though Often, my knees were skinned from playing outside. Uh, On occasion, with my skirt, I would wear a baseball glove to church. (laughs) So so, uh, I learned my way in the world uh, through some hard knocks, like we all did, I guess. And and I I learned to be a human, a woman, uh, a Christian, a spiritual being all along the way. What I learned about being a woman in the South is that you were to have power through a man, and that was the cultural norm. In many uh, uh, churches and different denominations in the South, often the the scripture was quoted that women were to be silent in church. Well, the church I grew up in was not that way, luckily. And as a matter of fact, growing up, I remember I was about eight years old and I was called into ministry when I was about eight years old. I was listening to the district district superintendent speak and she was a beautiful African-American woman who was just up there speaking truth and preaching. And I was, I was mesmerized. I said, wow, I want to do that when I grow up. And what I remember about it is she had so much spiritual power. And it seemed to elevate her out of the Southern rules. I don't know if it was because she was in a position of power because of her powerful voice and presence. But what I, I think it is looking back is that she really had her authority was coming from God, 
not from the culture at large, because this would have been in the, you know, mid to late seventies. And, you know, this was still early in the civil rights movement, ultimately, ultimately. Right. So think about that. So owning your power, owning your power. What I started to say earlier that this, this family, I, I was thinking about, there's several people I've worked with over the years from Japan and I've always heard some version of this as people are trying to grow spiritually that there is a hierarchy hierarchy and even a little bit of a of um a, a hierarchy even as you speak like there is a much more formal way of speaking there's a there's an informal way of speaking and there are many different levels of that even based on uh, where you are, like even in business, there is a hierarchy. I would relate it to how we think of sororities now, like the underclassmen serving the upperclassmen. This this may be a crude, uh, this may be a crude comparison, and my friends in Japan are certainly, I would be very open to them correcting me. But basically, there is a hierarchy of the way you speak and are spoken to. And a couple of my friends from there have said that spiritually as they grow and as they start to own their own power, it was interesting to go back into the culture where they felt like they had to almost apologize for their existence, depending on where they were in that hierarchy. So we all come from a certain culture and there are cultural rules in 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 the U.S. They're not quite as defined as they are in other cultures is what I've, is what I've noticed. So, so think about, you know, even though there are these cultural rules, what we're really talking about is a higher power to own. In other words, what is our spiritual power? What I believe is that our spiritual power is stronger, higher, and more important than the hierarchy of our particular culture. That said, we all have to live in the world and uh, there is such a thing in the South called knowing your place. <laughs> so, so it is an effort and it is a journey to move into your spiritual power in a way that you are not apologizing for who you are, that, you know, you are seeking to overcome old labels and ways of being based on the culture. And so this is an effort and this is a journey. For instance, one of the things that's very common in the South is, as a kid, you're to be seen and not heard, right? But then we read in the scriptures, we are to shine our light. You know, we are to speak the word into creation. And the Bible tells us our word does not return to us void. So, so it is a journey to owning our own power. It is a journey. When I use the word power, I'm sure in the world, that means something very different than it does spiritually, because what do we think about when we see power in the world? We think of what? We think of power over, I think. Power over is usually what we think of in the world when we think of power. Now, the, the ultimate definition, I mean, Oxford says, basically, it's the ability to do something. But in our world today, when we hear the word power, we usually think of it as negative, right? We think of it as negative. And power over authority, and really, another word might be influence. You know, oh, he has power or influence. She has power or influence. For instance, if you think of celebrities today, what do they have? They have power and influence. It doesn't matter if they don't know anything, what they wear and what they say has power and influence simply because they are well-known faces to us, right? That is power of the world. The kind of power I'm talking about, though, really is spiritual power, right? So is, today is about am I owning my spiritual power, realizing that owning our power is a journey, realizing that it is not power over, but it is an internal 
awareness. It is an internal feeling and knowing. It is an honoring. And then that that internal work, that internal worth that you have is what then shines out into the world. I see so often in the scriptures where it's like, in the world it's this, but you are to do that, right? The scripture I'm thinking of today is from the book of Matthew. It's from Matthew 5, and if you studied scriptures a lot, you know that Matthew 5 is the, it starts with the Sermon on the Mount. Verse 1 is the introduction, and then it goes into what we call the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit, you know, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. You know, it goes through each of those. And and as it goes down verse after verse after verse, verse 14 says, well, 13 and 14 are, are excellent in terms of owning your power. Matthew 5, verse 13, and this is a new international version, says, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a, land, light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So verse 13 through 16, that title of that section in Matthew 5 is called Salt and Light. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. You know, in other words, you remember in those days, salt would have been a curing thing, right? It would have helped you, uh, helped keep your food. It would have brought a lot of flavor as well as it does for us today without salt in the desert. I mean, you can't live. You've got to have salt, right? So think about that. You are salt. You are light. This is it pointing to, it doesn't say this is your power, but it's pointing to your innate spiritual power. It is pointing to your innate spiritual power. You are the, uh, you are the light of the world. Wow. So knowing you're the light of the world, friends, I want you to stay with me on this. And it, as I'm just saying this, I'll be honest, I'm, I'm tearing up a little bit. Because over the last few years, I've really had a lot of practice in learning my worth. Owning your own power is about knowing your worth. Spiritually, as a human being, walking around in the world, you are worthy. Well, what I've discovered is that I can read about it. Somebody can tell me all day long and until I feel it and I know it, my behaviors won't change to be in alignment with my spiritual power. So I've talked about it's a journey to get there. How do we get there? Well, it is by remembering, it is by affirming, it is by believing that I am worthy, that believing that I am the light of the world, believing that this presence of God does live in me. Believing that I am worthy gives me my spiritual power. Now, when I say gives me, you know that God has given me all the power already. When I say gives me, I mean it gives me the awareness of my spiritual power, because my spiritual power has always been there. So part of the journey is uncovering that light, that salt, right, that we are, that, that, that holiness, that goodness that gives life its goodness and flavor, right? So, so think about, like in the workplace, am I really owning that? Am I really owning my light? Am I really owning that spiritual power, not to bring other people down, not to say your beliefs are wrong, not to say you need to do it my way, but to simply shine your light, you know, that you're a place of goodness and wholeness and peace and knowing your worth. Don't be around people that don't acknowledge 
your goodness and your worth. You don't need to spend time going out for drinks if these people are negative and, you know, all of that. That's part of the workplace. You don't have to do that. You own your own power and you know who you are, that you know your worth and that you are worthy. That is owning your power. When I said earlier that over the last few years, I've had many opportunities to learn this, it's true, and I'm still learning it. Um, I have had uh, many conversations with corporations, with businesses, with the Chamber of Commerce, and, you know, I go out and do speaking events, and I speak for organizations as well as churches and spiritual communities, you know, many different kinds. I've done book signings. Uh, all kinds of things, right? I'm in a variety of environments. I've worked with mayors, with I've been on the mayor's council of clergy, all all sorts of things. So I've been in a lot of positions where I hold a position of power, and I've been in a many positions where I was seeking to work with an organization or I had to put out a proposal to somebody. And, you know, there had to be a dialogue about pricing or there had to be uh, a conversation about how much I would be paid to speak or present for that particular organization. And what I learned is that some organizations value people they bring in and some do not. And so as a business owner, as a minister, as a speaker, as a motivator, as a trainer, I've had to decide what is my worth to go out and give these messages of hope, of peace, of joy, of intentional living, right? By leading by example. You know, so much of what I do is leadership based. So companies I like to have me come in, work with their people on intention, on self-love, realizing that as their employees become more intentional, more self-aware, that communication gets better, that teamwork starts to happen, that collaboration and transparency starts to be more of the norm rather than, uh, you know, happening infrequently. So, you know, these are things that in the business world are beginning to pick up. But frankly, friends, some businesses do not want to invest in that. And so, over the last few years, I've had a couple people lowball their offers for me to come in. When I say lowball, I mean less than a third of what really I should be making. So part of me owning my power as a business owner, as a minister, as a speaker, is not being willing to show up for anything less than I'm worth. That has been a journey. It's very interesting, too, because I love to give away my time. I love to give to organizations. I love to volunteer. But when I'm speaking at a corporate level, knowing they spend thousands of dollars on drinks and snacks and everything else for their employees, it is really important for me to own my worth as a speaker, as a presenter, if I go into those types of venues. So much of what I do, like the podcast, some people never give. Some people are big givers because of how they value what I do. But there's no set fee. I love that. I love that I do a lot of things where people give for a love offering. But if I am going to go and be a presenter, it is important for me to own my power. Yes, to shine my light but to know my worth, to know my worth. And I think, friends, for all of us, this is a journey. I keep saying that that phrase, owning your power is a journey. I know because I'm, I'm working especially with a lot of men right now, and wow, I have seen in my lifetime men's role shift a little bit. When I say a little, I mean a lot. And a lot of the men I've worked with are trying to understand how they can own their power in the world today. Some of those men feel if they own their power, the women in their lives are going to 
uh, back away and say, don't be patriarchal, you know. So, so we're all, all in this place of learning how to own our power. I mean, I think I work with a lot of women too, and the women in business I work with are trying to learn how to lead from the feminine because all they've seen modeled is the patriarchal. It's like, can I lead with love and compassion and still be successful? Men are trying to figure out, can I still have my power, even though I don't want to be a jerk, I just want to be able to be a man, right? So those are serious questions people are asking themselves. So what I'm speaking of is our spiritual power, but friends, it relates to the larger whole. If I know my worth, it doesn't matter if you want the door held open for you or not. I know my worth. I know I am of God. I know that Christ lives in me. I know that God is shining his light in and through me. I know the light of the Christ is alive in me. In other words, my value is not is not made by how the world responds. My value, my worth comes from God. My value is simply because I am. In my coaching with people, I work with several top executives. I'm saying that so you know they're people of influence, not because I have anything to prove. And it's so wonderful to watch them know their value in the work I do with them, it's often having having them be aware of the gift they're bringing to a certain organization, you know, or company, and then owning that and knowing if it's not here, it's somewhere else. And I've seen over and over and over how when we own our own power, our own worth, that the universe has to respond in kind. That if we're feeling undervalued is simply because we're undervaluing ourselves. And that's what I mean by owning your power is a journey because none of us arrive to adulthood being perfectly at peace with our power. <laughs> you know, it's like we're all a work in progress. And depending on how you were raised, you know, what your birth order was, what your culture is. It's a day-by-day, moment-by-moment process, knowing your worth, knowing your power, and owning that in the world. So I guess the question we're really talking about when I say own your power, it's really about knowing your worth. I mentioned earlier that the Beatitudes are in Matthew 5, and... It's interesting that I noticed something that I had never noticed before in these scriptures. And I'm going to read a couple of these to you in the Beatitudes. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And what I see in all of those, so that was Matthew 5, verses 6, 7, and 8. What I see about each of those is, first, we, as the human, have to seek and act to receive that same blessing back. In other words, it is the law of cause and effect, also called the law of circulation, also called the law of karma, right, that we get from the Eastern tra traditions. But, but you have to have a pure heart to see God. You have to be merciful to be shown mercy. It's the same thing I'm saying about our power. We have to know there, we're a light so that we can shine it. It's like the power was always there. It's like the wizard, a wizard of Oz, right? You know, she could have gone home anytime. Yeah, she always had the power. 
She simply had to want it. So I hope today, friend, as I'm talking about all this, you're tracking with me. You're thinking about where am I, am I on my journey with this? Am I in my spiritual power? Am I stepping into it? Am I owning it in the workplace, in my relationships, in my family? Not the kind of power that overrules and dominates, but the kind of power that is strong, that is sure, that is true, the kind of power that is rooted in God and is rooted in love and knows its worth and its light. Friends, when we can do that, we are really doing a holy thing. When we know our worth, when we're standing in truth, in love, in in like we're like we're sure, you know, we're 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 um there's a statement in building, what did my dad used to say? Oh yeah, that like when you would get it just right, he would say, That's plum. You know, like when something is 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 dependable when it's been built correctly, we will know who we are when we can own our power. I hope this is making sense. I feel like I'm not saying the right word, but I feel like you're getting the energy. That when I'm in my power, I'm a person that can be depended on. I'm a person that can be um, sought after for support that I am a person of light, that I stand true and strong in my beliefs, that I shine my light to the very best of my ability in the world, and that I know my worth. Friends, knowing your worth is so important as we live our lives in this journey we call life on planet Earth and what I often refer to as the third dimension consciousness. I think it is so important that we know our worth. Everything in the world wants to tell us that we need it. Fashion, cars, homes, security systems, everything. Everything is being sold to us. And The way it gets to us is, you know, you'll hear it these days, fear of missing out. People now don't even say the words. They say FOMO, right? Fear of missing out. Don't miss it. When you know your power, you know you can't miss out. You know you're guided. You know you're blessed. You know you will be moving forward to do what's yours to do. And when you make a purchase, it's because it supports you, not because you've been tricked into buying something you don't need. Owning your power is a place of freedom. Is it is a place of knowing your worth? Is it it is a place of shining your light, of being seen, of being heard. It is a place of strength. Owning your spiritual power is a place of strength. It will help you live your innate goodness in the world. It will help you build a family and friends of peace. It will help you know and those around you that they are loved. Owning your spiritual power, friends, is something we are all called to do and be. The scripture again, I'm going to read Matthew 5, 14 through 16 from the New International Version. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. My prayer for you, dear friend, is that you continue on this journey to your own power that you own it, that you know it, and that you live it in the world, that you know your power is from God, that you will be seen and heard, and that, in fact, dear friend, you will shine your light as you know your worth. So remember that to live your spiritual life in this way, to shine your light, 
is to own your power and that this is truly a holy thing. And I promise you, friends, as you own your power and own that spiritual light that you are, not only will your life be blessed, but all those around you as well. So I thank you so, so much for joining us today, dear friend. It is the day to march forth and do what yours to do. So bless you on the journey, dear friends. And I look forward to talking with you next week. Many blessings. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Authentic Spiritual Journey here on the Experience of the Soul podcast channel. This channel is made possible because of listeners just like you. If you would like to support the channel with your tax-deductible contribution on an ongoing basis or through a one-time gift, head over to experienceofthesoul.com slash support. The Authentic Spiritual Journey is copyright 2024, Cynthia Alice Anderson, all rights reserved. Our theme music is composed by Dave Croft and used with permission from RR Hot Publishing. The Experience of the Soul podcast channel is a production of 818 Studios.